Magandang umaga po. Ito ang News TV Live. Nagpapatuloy pa rin ang confirmation hearing kina Justice Secretary Laila De Lima at DSWD Secretary Dinky Soliman. <laughs> Sa ngayon po ay uh, nakabreak uh, lamang ang uh, pagdinig na yan, confirmation hearing na ginagawa sa Senado at nakatakda nga pong isa lang dyan si uh, Secretary Dinky Saliman ng DSWD at itong uh, si uh, Secretary Laila De Lima ng DOJ. Uh, dalawang senador na ho nag nagpasabi na sila ay... Uh, Susubok harangin itong uh, confirmation ng uh, dalawang uh, cabinet secretaries ng kasalukuyang administrasyon. Si uh, Secretary uh, Laila De Lima ay uh, may pauna ng pasabi itong uh, si Senador o si Senadora uh, Miriam Defensor Santiago na siya ay uh, gagamit ng uh, tinatawag na Section 20 ng uh, rules ng uh, confirmation para nga maharang itong uh, paglusot ni uh, Secretary Laila De Lima. Gayun din ay nandyan si uh, Sandra Cam. Ito naman ay uh, nauna na nga nagpasabi na siya ay uh, may nalalaman tungkol umano sa pribadong buhay ni uh, Secretary Laila De Lima. Para sa karagdagan detalye sa isinasagwang confirmation hearing kay DSWD Secretary Dinky Suleman, may report si Mark Salazar. Mark? Sandra, naka-recess lang ngayon ano, yung uh, committee ng uh, Social Welfare and uh, Labor para nga doon sa confirmation ni Secretary Suleiman at uh, kanilang pagdidesisyonan kung uh, irerekomenda na ba itong committee si um, Secretary Suleiman for plenary mamayang hapon. Eh, ang problema kasi kahit naman irekomenda uh, si Secretary Suleiman ay meron ng sulat sa komite si Senator Miriam Santiago bilang member ng Commission on Appointments na pag ito ay sinalang sa plenary ay kanya din namang gagamitan ng Section 20 na sa ilalim ng kanilang uh, rules ay, ay uh, walang sabi-sabihan Sandra ay uh, mababaypas yung isang nominee isang ad interim, ad interim appointment uh, ng Pangulo at taktauhan nga ni Secretary Soliman. Ngayon ang sinasabi ng uh, chairman ng uh, committee ay baka daw hindi na muna nila pagbotohan ngayong umaga itong uh, pag-submit uh, to plenary kay uh, Secretary Suleiman at baka pwedeng sa June 11 na lang ang huling uh, CA uh, hearing bago uh, ang kanilang uh, recess, Sandra. Mark, si um, Secretary Soliman ay uh, ilang beses na rin nga uh, na, kumbaga, na-bypass ng uh, CA, no? Ilang, uh, ano nga information mo, ilang beses na? Uh, Kasiapat na taon na itong nanonungkulan, ano? Isa nga yan sa mga pinagtalunan nila kanina, Sandra, kasi po ano understanding ba? Si Congressman Rodolfo Parinas na nagtatanong kay Secretary Soliman na sa tingin niya, ilang beses na siyang na-bypass ay kung bibilangin ni uh, ni uh, Secretary Suleiman yung ilang beses na nag-recess yung Kongreso na hindi siya uh, na-confirm ay dalawa o tatlo na raw. Pero hindi. At tinatanong ni, uh, Secret ni uh, Congressman pa rin niya sa ilang beses ka na, uh, na, na nakakuha ng appointment papers, uh, three appointment papers uh, sa Malacanang. At hindi na rin bilang labing lima mga ganyan daw. At tinasabi ni Farinas, under the rules, under the law, yan yung bilang na ikaw ay binaypas. So, sa ganang kay uh, Congressman Farinas ay labing lima na beses nang nababaypas okay. itong si uh, Secretary Suleiman Sandra. Yes, Mark. Uh, pwede po bang uh, masabi sa amin? Kasi nakikita namin sa video no, na mukhang palabas ng uh, kwarto itong uh, si Secretary Suleiman. Anong nagaganap dyan, Mark? Ay, kasi uh, ito yung pinag-decision na naka, naka-recess sila no? kasi hindi na rin yata ito masasalang sa plenary pero teka lang ha, nag, baka nag-aambush interview. May lumayo-layo kasi ako sa Andres Ahiring at mag-iingay ako eh. Baka ako yung masita. Nag-labas, uh, nag-ilala. Ayan, yes, Marco. Pero, oh, nakikita nga natin eh, no, na nag-pa-interview uh, na siya sa, sa uh, media. No? Subukan natin, Mark, uh, pakinggan uh, itong uh, pahayag ni Secretary. Itasalang ko yung, yung, ano ko ha, yung telepono ko. Ano ba ito? Ano ba ito? 
Ano mic siya? Sige, sige, boom mic, boom mic. Ayan po, nagbibigay na ng pahayag si Secretary Soliman. Gusto ko siya dito sa community level. So ang kasunod niya ay doon na sa ito nga kung si Secretary Soliman ay sa ngayon ay nagbibigay ng payag sa media matapos nga uh, ayon sa report nga ni Mark Salazar ay uh, mukhang ipinagpaliban muna no, yung uh, kanyang confirmation hearing na naman. At uh, ito ay kahit na um, hindi nakarating si uh, Senator Santiago pero siya naman ay nagpadala ng sulat na siya ay uh, tumututol dito sa confirmation nga ni Secretary Suleiman gamit yung tinatawag na Section 20. Yun pong Section 20 kasi kapag ginamit ng isang senador uh, laban sa isang uh, uh, opisyal na subject for confirmation, ay walang sabi-sabi talaga ay uh, pwedeng ma-defer yung uh, confirmation ng opisyal na iyan. So, kapag iyan ho ay ginagamit, ay uh, talagang uh, napapagpaliban yung confirmation. Kaya nga po, dalawa po sa cabinet members ng kasalukoy administrasyon ay ilang beses na paulit-ulit ng uh, na-bypass yung kanilang uh, confirmation at sila ay uh, hindi nakumpirma dito sa tinatawag na makapangyarihang Commission on Appointments. So bukan po nating uh, pakinggan ang uh, pahayag ni uh, Secretary Soliman. Commission on appointments is here by call to order. Before we proceed, is there any motion to defer the roll call? Mr. Chairman, I move that we defer the calling of the roll of members. If there is no... Uh, with the permission of the Chairman, I just acknowledge and name those who are here. Yes, the uh, Mr. Uh, Vice Chairman of the Commission. Ang uh, pagdinig uh, ng Commissioner of Appointments. The Senate Majority Leader. Uh, uh, Senate Pro Temp. <laughs> Ngayon naman po ay uh, isasalang uh, sa confirmation hearing si DOJ Secretary Laila De Lima. Congressman Leonel Pizarro, Congressman George Arnaiz, Congressman Labad-Labad, Congressman... Oh, they were here. But, uh, Congressman Labad-Labad, Congressman Del Rosario are also here, Congressman Amatong, but we have multiple uh, meetings, uh, Mr. Chairman, so they are here uh, and there. Thank you very much, Majority Floor Leader Farinas, Congressman Farinas. So there has been no objection. The motion is carried. And for the record, the Vice Chairman of this Committee on Justice and Judicial and Bar Council is Congresswoman Catalina Baby Leonen Pizarro. So we are here to deliberate on the ad interim appointment of the Honorable Laila M. De Lima as Secretary of the Department of Justice. I'd like to manifest that as of this date, there are three sworn oppositions filed before the Commission on Appointments, and they are as follows. Sandra M. Kam, Kam, uh, uh, Kam's uh, sworn opposition dated May 30, 2014, received by the Commission on Appointments on June 2, 2014. Maria Virginia Libonao, uh, has a sworn opposition dated May 30, 2011, received by the CA on June 2, 2011. And former Congressman Orlando Fua has a sworn opposition dated May 10, 2011, received by the Commission on Appointments on May 11, 2011. And just uh, for the information of everybody, the chair on June 2, 2014, received a copy of a letter, it's not a sworn opposition, dated May 29, 2014, filed by a certain Nicolaus Spanudis. Nicolaus Spanudis, who claims to be a uh, dual citizen, a Greek and an American. 
A reply dated May 30, 2011 has been filed by Secretary De Lima to former Congressman Fuwa's opposition dated May 10, 2011. And also for the information of uh, everybody, the committee received last May 27, 2014, a fax, uh, through fax transmittal, a letter dated May 23, 2014, from Rodolfo, Congressman Rodolfo Albano III, informing the committee chair that the minority contingent of the House of Representatives interposes no objection to the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of the Honorable Laila de Lima. So let us now proceed to deliberate on the ad interim appointment of the Honorable uh, Laila M. de Lima as Secretary of the Department of Justice. Jurisdictional, okay. So I would like to request the Commission on Appointment Secretary Arturo Chu to report on the relevant facts and state whether there has been compliance with the jurisdictional requirements in accordance with the rules of the Commission and the Standing Committee relative to the ad interim appointment of the Honorable Laila M. De Lima as Secretary, Department of Justice. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor. Uh, Secretary Laila De Lima's uh, ad interim appointment, uh, which is a subject to, to this uh, deliberation, she has complied with all the necessary documentary requirements as provided for in Section 24, Chapter 5 of the Rules of the Commission. Her original ad interim appointment, which was issued on June 30, 2010, and the succeeding reappointments were issued, including the current one dated 13 March 2014, were all referred to the chairman of the committee by the chairman of the commission of appointments. Her ad interim appointment was duly published in two newspapers of general circulation in, in compliance with Article 2, Section 2 of the Rules of the Standing Committees. As mentioned earlier by the Honorable Chairman, we have three oppositors. Only one oppositor is present today. Uh, oppositors uh, Libonao and Fua are not present today. We also received a letter of endorsement from the members of Sangguniang Panlalawigan of Albay relative to the Secretary of the Lima's ad interim appointment. Uh, that is all, Mr. Chairman, Your Honors, for uh, the jurisdictional requirement. Thank you, uh, Secretary Chu. May we ask the Majority Floor Leader to report on the parliamentary status relative to the ad interim appointment of the Honorable Laila M. De Lima as Secretary, Department of Justice, and the three sworn oppositions filed there, too. Uh, Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, uh, actually, as to the parliamentary status of this particular appointee, I am at a loss because wala yatang parliamentary status. This is the first time that she appears, so I traced the records and I could not find any previous incident as to the uh, confirmation of this particular nominee. So, there is zero parliamentary status, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Majority Leader, for uh, confirming my earlier statement that this is the first uh, regular meeting of this committee. So this will be the procedure we, uh, which we will follow. We will uh, invite the we will invite the appointee to make a statement, and then. Uh, yeah, yes, after, 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 after administering the oath. That's this is a procedure, and then uh, we will hear from the oppositors if uh, they, they are present. And then we will now proceed with the questions from the committee members, and then we will proceed with our deliberation. So may I ask the uh, Secretary, uh, Commission Appointment Secretary Chu, to administer the oath to Secretary Laila de Lima? Do you swear to tell the throat, the whole throat, and nothing but the throat in these proceedings? So help you, God. I do swear. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Your Honors. Good morning, Secretary uh, Laila de Lima. You have the floor, ma'am. You, uh, you, you can use this time to introduce yourself to the committee members and then as well as make a preliminary statement. And I'm sure you have also 
he can also probably answer already the issues raised against you if you have read and see if you have seen and read the oppo sworn oppositions go ahead ma'am thank you honorable chair i wish to make an opening statement good morning honorable chair and members of the commission on appointments i come here in full recognition of this august body's constitutional mandate to scrutinize and pass upon appointments in line with constitutional checks and balances. After nearly four whole years in the Department of Justice, I come here before you as someone who has worn and is wearing many hats, all of which in some way inform who I am and the manner by which I have endeavored to discharge my mandate thus far as the Secretary or the Ad Interim Secretary of Justice. I come before you as a daughter who has endeavored to do her parents proud, especially her father who was himself a lawyer and a public servant during his time, and who is constantly the benchmark I measure myself against in terms of my professional success and integrity. A single mother whose marriage has long since been judicially annulled and who has been blessed with two sons and two grandchildren, the elders of both sets being children with autism who have been the Lord's unexpected gifts to our family and my constant sources of strength and inspiration. An independent career woman who has made a name for herself as a lawyer and as a professional in her own right, having handled high profile election cases, including what has since been dubbed the Maguindanao electoral fraud of 2007, during which the call of duty of an advocate required me to traverse the so-called Ampatuan territory during the height of the clan's power, which, unknown to most of us back then, was but a prelude to the extreme levels of atrocities cer certain members of said family, we will learn two years later, were apparently capable of. As the former chairperson of the Commission on Human Rights, appointed by the same president, who was even then linked by contemporary reports to the 2007 Maguindanao election controversy, due to her known political allies of the Ampatuan clan, and as such chairperson, endeavored to bring human rights and the rights-based approach to governance to the consciousness of the public in order to compensate for the commission's jurisprudentially acknowledged status as a paper tiger. And now as someone who has served as the Secretary of Justice or ad interim Secretary of Justice for nigh on four full years now, having been unexpectedly given the mandate by then President-elect Benigno S. Aquino III and now coming before the Honorable Commission on Appointments to seek the confirmation of such mandate. Having this much history crammed into four years characterized by the literally unrelenting daily demands of public service in a department that perhaps has the broadest scope of mandate is to be frank and to put it pl plainly both a blessing and a curse. It is a curse, so to speak, because by the very nature of this job, performing it means that there will always be a losing party, and hence someone will always feel aggrieved. It has been said that it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. In my experience, it is impossible to faithfully perform the mandate of Secretary of Justice without incurring negative sentiments, varying in degrees, from mere flack to outright wrath from some sectors. One thing I can say with complete equanimity, though, is that as far as I am concerned, I have made no enemies, because all I have ever done is do my job, which is to deliver justice, nothing more, nothing less. To deliver justice, I have to be a truth seeker, and that is all we in the DOJ care about. From the moment we hit the ground running, from the then standing DOJ resolutions on various major cases, such as those relating to the Ampatuan massacre, Ruby Rose Barameda, Jerry Ortega cases, among others, to the investigation conducted by the Incident Investigation and Review Committee, or IIRC, of which I was chair, into the tragic August 23, 2010 Rizal Park hostage-taking crisis, the Norio O'Hara extortion allegations, 
the notorious Dominguez brothers kidnapping syndicate cases, the Makati bus bombing incident, the Leia Nang or septic tanks lake case, the Atimonan massacre case, the death of suspected Ozami's gang leader Ricky Cadavero while in the custody of members of the BNP, the Balintang Channel incident, the Globe Asia Tick Pag Pag Ibig Fund case, Amalilio and Rasuman large scale financial scams, and the PDUF and Malampaya Fund scams, to name but only a few of the high profile cases we've handled. It was never about who we will, will be charged, but whether the conclusion and action we will be, taught, will be, uh, we will be taking is based solely on the merits and the evidence gathered and on record. On the other hand, being brought before the commission now is also a blessing because I come before you not as a wet behind the ears rookie who naively and blindly promises to deliver the moon and the stars in order to gain your approval. Therefore, none of you would have to wonder if I'm sincere or if I am engaging in double talk. By now you would know that with me, what you see is what you get, which is someone who knows exactly what the job demands and even exactly how demanding the job is. Being part of the executive was truly a whole different ball game for someone who has been an advocate my entire career up to that point. Mr. Chairman, uh, may I just, Mr. Chairman, may I interrupt for the... Uh, excuse us, uh, Secretary, yes. Because we have simultaneous meetings and I'm also the majority leader in the Defense Committee. So I'm asking the honorable members here who are members of the Defense Committee if there are any objections to any of the promotions there. Kasi kung wala po, i-approve na po namin. Baka naman sabihin nyo, ito yung pinalusutan kami nito si Rudy. So, I will not move there. Kung mer so, everybody is here okay sa defense po. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you Mr. Majority Leader. <laughs> Sorry for that, Madam Secretary. Continue pa. No problem. May I continue, Your Honors? Being part of the executive was truly a whole different ball game for someone who has been an advocate my entire career up to that point. First as a lawyer in private practice, then as the head of the constitutional watchdog for human rights abuses. It is literally a 24-7 job that recognizes no rest day, no holiday, no sacred day, and where anything can happen at any given moment. The matters that the public sees the DOJ handling as reported in the media is not even 10% of what occupies our time. Aside from the inevitable paper and administrative work and cases that, might, that must be seen to, in order to keep the DOJ and all of its attached agencies running, there are the legal opinions that we render to guide our fellow public servants and even private persons. And of course, assignments from the president, to name but a few. Typhoons such as Pablo, Sendong, and Yolanda strike the DOJ is on hand to advise the president on what he can do, how we can accomplish it, what agencies or tiers of government units may be tapped, what legal provisions to invoke, and perhaps just as importantly, what are the conditions or limitations for the exercise of governmental power under such circumstances. Foreign poachers are caught in flagrante delicto within Philippine waters or exclusive economic zone, or a foreign vessel suddenly finds itself aground in a Philippine UNESCO protected coral reef, the DOJ is one of the agencies called upon to advise concerned offices and officials of the possible legal repercussions of alternative courses of action. The public might think all we do is investigate and prosecute crimes, but, but we do so much more to uphold the rule of law. Through our legal opinions, for instance, we make sure that other, that other government agencies are guided in taking the right course of action. Our legislature has passed many, many good laws, especially those governing procurement and the spending of public funds, but implementing them becomes a challenge, not necessarily because those charged with implementing them have evil intent, but because they simply are not equipped to navigate the intricacies of the law and the nuances of the Constitution. Thus, I take this mandate as Attorney General of the Republic very seriously. Therefore, I have eliminated past practices that tend to diminish 
the capability of members of the legal staff to make independent assessments of the legal issues involved by implementing reforms that ensure that our state councils and lawyers know that their duty is to advise parties as to what they ought to know about the law and not what they want to believe the law says. Integrity reforms and initiatives have been made across the DOJ and its attached agencies, especially by making sure that those at the top levels set a good example for the rank and file, because I know for a fact that the most important resource of the department is its human resource, its officials, lawyers, administrative and technical staff, and so forth. A few rotten eggs may give the agency a bad name, but if those rotten eggs are in leadership positions, they can mar and compromise and even cripple the institution. Hence, I have had no qualms about ordering investigations and even entrapment op op operations against employees and officials of the DOJ, which have led to the separation from the service of two directors of the Bureau of Corrections, one director of the National Bureau of Investigation, among others defiling of charges against prosecutors and their staff, as well as against Im immigration officials, and even including the chief of staff of a former commissioner of the Bureau of Immigration, who were found responsible for or involved in incidents like the suspicious escape of a South Korean fugitive while in the BI's custody, the escape from Philippine jurisdiction of individuals for whom the BI was previously put on alert, including another South Korean fugitive, a Canadian teacher involved in the death of two minor students, the Reyes brothers, among others, and even due to immigration officials and employees' complicity in human trafficking activities, particularly in the Justado Macapagal International Airport. These efforts are on top of the establishment of internal affairs units in the National Prosecution Service, the launch of the Code of Conduct for NPS prosecutors and members of the prosecutorial staff. My four years of experience has also taught me that the proper discharge of the DOJ's mandate reaches its fullest potential when we work in cooperation amongst ourselves and with other government agencies. Within the DOJ, I have promoted a paradigm shift that fosters coordination between concerned agencies in order to strengthen case buildup and ensure successful prosecution of cases filed in court. So too, through cooperation with the DILG, DENR, PNP, Office of the Ombudsman, COA, among others, we have formed committees and bodies that synchronize our efforts to combat illegal gambling, illegal logging, illegal mining operations, extrajudicial killings, and forced disappearances, and other forms of human rights violations, graft and corruption, and human trafficking. In fact, through the successes of the Interagency Council Against Trafficking, or IACAT, which the DOJ chairs, and for which investigative, prosecutorial, and immigration-related support services are rendered, but whose accomplishments could not have been achieved without the full cooperation of all other agencies involved, we finally succeeded in having the Philippines removed from the Tier 2 watch list, which success, which, which, uh, success we have maintained for the last two years, or three years. But my insight into the operations of the DOJ has also taught me that it also has a role in forging new initiatives that will define the Philippine legal system for future generations, such as through a thorough and comprehensive review of our criminal laws through the Criminal Code Committee, the establishment of the Office for Competition, the Office of Alternative Dispute Resolution, and the Cybercrime Office, among others. Thus. The DOJ does not only respond to existing legal issues, it works to prevent legal problems from arising through the rendering of sound legal advice and even looks forward to defining and redefining the Philippine legal landscape to make it more responsive to the needs of the Filipino people. Your Honors, I do not claim to be an expert on all areas of the law. I do not claim either that I have never made any errors in judgment or that I am incapable of making them in the future. Quite frankly, I don't think anyone can make such a claim. But I can say that there is one quality 
that a Secretary of Justice must have and which I know I deliver and will continue to deliver. The singular tenacity to do what needs to be done without fear or favor. I have proven this time and again, whether my critics acknowledge it or not. Back when I was appointed as chairperson of the CHR, my appointment was dubbed as a controversial choice because there were those who entertained the thought that I was selected in order to silence me as one of the voices that protested the results of the 2007 elections. Whatever then President Arroyo's motivation may have been in appointing me, only she would know for sure. But I have proven that I cannot be silenced by a misguided sense of utang na loob. Nor can I be intimidated by attempting to instill fear of the consequences that may be visited upon me, whether it be threat to my life and limb, or crass forms of public harassment, both of which I have had to endure in the last four years. Some have called me a controversial public figure. I will not and cannot deny it. Back when I was the chairperson of the CHR, public advocacy was our most effective and important weapon against the then prevailing culture of silence and impunity. A time when people, including journalists, were threatened with both legal and extra legal action against exercising their freedom of expression and freedom of the press. Being heard and being seen by the public was our best weapon after the Supreme Court had decided that we had no quasi-judicial, prosecutorial, or even compulsory powers. Thus, the nature of the job demanded that we be visible. Perhaps that visibility was inevitably carried over when I transitioned into the DOJ. But I never asked to be controversial. In fact, it would have been impossible to remain uncontroversial when high-profile cases kept arising. They just fall on my lap. The only way, perhaps, to keep a low profile is to not do anything worth public notice. Therefore, I take being called a controversial public figure for what it is, an indication that I am being true to my commitment, real and proven these last four years of taking on all the challenges that remain ahead. With that, ladies and gentlemen, honorable chair and members, I submit myself for your consideration. I humbly and fervently pray for your confirmation. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat po, Madam Secretary. Uh, before we proceed with uh, uh, questions or some comments from the members of this committee, we will give you a chance to confront face-to-face -face your oppositors, should they be here, uh, present. Uh, th there was a sworn opposition to you filed by former Congressman Orlando Fuwa way back in 2011. So. We have had sufficient time to read it, and as well, uh, and you have also filed a, your uh, reply to it. So uh, the chair considers that uh, those two documents, uh, for which you have had uh, three years to go over the two documents, uh, sufficient enough uh, explanation. But uh, there is also a sworn opposition from uh, Virginia Libunau, who is, who, who is not here. But you have not taken the time, Madam Secretary, to answer it. Maybe, maybe you can answer it in writing if you want. But the chair uh, makes it a record that, I, I, as a lawyer, I, I, I've read the, the complaint, and it's about some procedures in your office, and uh, the problem started uh, with your predecessors. Actually, there were conflicting uh, decisions. So maybe. Uh, uh, in a nutshell, Your Honor, yes, I can, I can ahead, uh, state my position on that. Uh, this opposition filed by Mrs. Virginia Libuno, she, she was formerly a BI personnel, and she was uh, terminated from service on account of uh, grave misconduct. There was a complaint from a foreign national about alleged kidnapping and extortion from a group of BI personnel, and if she happens to be part of those uh, charged by that foreign national. I'm referring to the oppositor, Mrs. Libunao. So even before my time, my, 
my predecessors, then former Secretary Raul Gonzalez and uh, Secretary Agnes de Venadera, they both rendered a resolution adverse to her. Although the first, the first decision, a resolution rendered by former Secretary Raul uh, Gonzalez was it, uh, it modified the penalty recommended by the BI from dismissal from service to uh, three months suspension. Now, during the time of uh, Secretary Agnes de Venadera, uh, she, she also acted on it and she uh, reinstated the penalty of dismissal. And my, during my time, so it was a repetitive plea on the part of uh, the oppositor, Mrs. Libuno. And I reviewed the records and I affirmed or I sustained, I agreed with the resolution of Secretary de Venadera. And as a matter of fact, Your Honor, the oppositor elevated the matter to the Civil Service Commission and the Civil Service Commission sustained the action of uh, my action in, in sustaining the dismissal penalty. So I, I guess yes, Madam Secretary. it's as simple as that. Yeah, the oppositor, of course, has remedies, and I think she pursued them. Uh, but the incident, I hope that you have done something within the department so that incidents like, like this will, will no longer uh, happen in the future, where there is confusion because of apparently conflicting uh, resolutions. resolutions of the secretary. Not you, but your predecessors. The previous, and, it, and the conflict, actually, Your Honor, has something to do only with an error in the date oh, of uh, the resolution. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how is your record keeping in the record keeping in the department? I mean, I'd like to say that... Uh, have you improved the record keeping? It, it has improved. There have been, I, I must admit, there have been previous instances of misplacement of records. Early on, when I first came in, that's one of the things that I discovered, there were misplaced or even missing records. But uh, of course, I, 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 uh, I uh, directed them to, re to trace those records and we have, we have uh, uh, put in or installed measures yes, to okay. avoid repetition. Uh -huh. Sige po. Salamat po. Parang wake up call lang yung letter ni, uh, yung opposition ni Ms. Libonao po. So uh, I've been informed that uh, present here today is one of the oppositors, Ms. Sandra Kam. So may we call on Ms. Sandra Kam uh, and ask, uh, ask our uh, secretary, uh, the CA secretary, to administer the oath to Ms. Sandra Kam. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth or nothing but the truth in these proceedings? So help you God. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Your Honors. Thank you, uh, Ms. Kam. <clears throat> although, although your sworn uh, opposition was only filed on June 2, 2014. Uh, the chairman, and I'm assuming all the members, have had sufficient time to go over it. We have, re we have read it, and it's, uh, it's on file with us. And, and I, 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 I observe that it's a, it's a, mix, it's a mix of uh, some personal knowledge and some uh, allegations based on reports that you have received. So, I'd like to ask you, Ms. Kam, to if you have some additional statements to make, but the appeal of the chair to you is to limit yourself to you, those of your personal knowledge, because that is, in my opinion, that is the essence of uh, executing a sworn statement, that you are uh, executing a statement based on personal knowledge. So, Ms. Kam, go ahead, please. Uh, good morning, Your Honors. May I ask, please, Mr. Chairman, if you can allow me to read my uh, opening statement? Edmund. Honorable members of this uh, August body, ladies and gentlemen here, good morning. 
public office is a public trust. Public officers and employees must at all times be accountable to the people, serve them with utmost responsibility, integrity, loyalty, and efficiency. Act with patriotism and justice, and lead modest lives. Public officers, whether elected or appointed, are in charge of running and governing the country, and thus, their position entails at most responsibility and diligence. <coughs> because of the nature of their duties and functions, the performance of these officials will have a great effect on the lives of many. Conversely, if a public officer proves himself or herself to be unfit for the office reposed upon her, it is my duty as a citizen of this state to bring the matter to the attention of the people and of the proper authorities, which is the Commission on Appointments. That is why I am here today to plead before this honorable commission not to confirm the appointment of Laila de Lima as head of the Justice Department. Aristotle once said, at his best, man is the noblest of all animals, but separated from law and justice, he is the worst. I need not stress how greatly our people depend on the Department of Justice, the very agency of the government tasked to maintain law and order and to protect and advance them from crime, criminality, and anarchy. Sad to say, however, under the leadership of Laila de Lima, the department revolts against its very own vision. Thus, instead of a just and peaceful society anchored on the principles of transparency, accountability, fairness, and truth, we live in riotous and lawless communities anchored on selective justice, bias, political alliances, and lies. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes, when the Bengkuri lang po, uh, how long is this opening statement po? Kung pwede ko lang malaman po. Napakakunti lang po dito. This Thank is you. very short than, than Thank the Secretary State. Thank you. Proceed, Ms. Kamp. Set aside her fame and countless television appearance for the past years, the Limas and her Department of Justice have shown us nothing but crimes and disorder, fugitives exiting the country with impunity, politically motivated prosecutions, baby treatment of a scam queen, ill treatment and lousy protection of state witnesses, and a snail-like administration of justice. Our state can no longer afford to entrust the department to its hair. It is time for the department to instill fear in the hearts and minds of criminals and lawless elements regardless of their political affiliations, to render justice to the victim's crime by putting felons behind bars, and to stretch unsparingly to everyone the mighty arms of the law. We cannot tolerate selective justice and do favors to crooks. Flight of fugitives is lost prosecution and the pampering of crooks and thieves anymore. So I present myself before this honorable body today to bring justice to the Department of Justice, an institution victimized by the incompetence and apathy of its very leader. I humbly present before this honorable commission an affidavit I myself executed to oppose the confirmation of Blida de Lima's appointment as Secretary of Justice, praying that this humble effort of mine 
will bring back righteousness to a department turned wicked because of its head. After all is said and done, more is said than done. Thank you very much, Your Honors. Thank you, Ms. Cam. Your, uh, when you mentioned the affidavit, are you referring to the same affidavit already on file with us, ma'am? The June 2, the one we received? Yes, Your Honor. So it's, yes, a, it's a record already, ma'am, and uh, all members have been given uh, a copy. But I want to ask the appointee if, uh, uh, Madam Secretary, have you been given a copy and have you, have, have you had time to go over the, the affidavit? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I, I uh, had um, the occasion to uh, go over the affidavit. Yes, ma'am. Uh, but before you, you proceed, now, I, uh, I, I, I have noticed uh, seven categories in the affidavit, so I'm assuming you have read it. So if you, if you care to, to answer uh, any, any point raised in the affidavit, there are, I have noticed seven uh, main uh, categories there. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Thank you very much. May I just state for the record that uh, a copy of this uh, sworn affidavit of Oppositor Sandra Kam was served on the office, on my office, only in the afternoon of Monday, June 2. And I saw this only yesterday. But of course, in preparation for today's appearance before this honorable committee, I endeavored to uh, really read this uh, opposition. And I would have wanted to submit a written opposition, uh, a written uh, comment, if only that I was given also a reasonable time. But I can waive that because I can respond to, uh, to these points or issues raised by uh, the oppositor. Oh, which uh, do you prefer, to respond now or a written uh, response? Because for the information of everybody, uh, I also received a letter from the office of the Senate Majority Leader, Senator Alan Peter Caetano, and he's really asking for uh, one more hearing. So, and we, we really have to also give in to his request. Otherwise, he will ask questions, uh, uh, his questions in plenary session, if, if, we, if we will not. So, uh, uh, this chair is open to, to an, another another hearing actually so you you will have time to answer so is, well, which do you how do you prefer to answer madam secretary now or in writing i, I can always submit a written oh. comment your honor uh but i am submitting myself to the discretion of the the honorable commission ah, sige, the honorable lang, madam secretary points that you uh, want to answer now you can answer now yes ah, i can respond very briefly on some points raised in, in the in the affidavit without prejudice without prejudice to the submission of a written comment on on my part okay on on point number one unjustifiable inaction and gross incompetence in pursuing cases lodged before the DOJ the uh, oppositor cites the case of Makilala she's accusing me of incompetence and inaction in handling this case but the records would would show that I actually acted on the complaints or allegations of Mr. Makilala when I created a task a task force or a fact-finding committee and as the oppositor is really aware of the uh, committee or the fact-finding committee has released its report and recommendation and I submitted the, rele the report and recommendation to the Office of the President. My latest action was referring it to the Office of the Executive Secretary because the official being charged then, <coughs> excuse me, is a presidential appointee. And, 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 and therefore, I, I don't think that um, this accusation holds water. I did my part in... in, 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 in uh, initiating a, uh, an investigation into those allegations of Mr. Makilala. We also placed him under witness protection program on request of, uh, of uh, the oppositor. And I uh, forwarded the report and recommendation to the office of the president for its appropriate action. The former director of Pangilinan being a presidential appointee. And as we know, the, the, this actually triggered 
his resignation as then Bucor director. And I also understand from the oppositor that uh, they even also went to the ombudsman and the case is now pending before the ombudsman. Point num next point, Paul. Incompetence as chairwoman of the Commission on Human Rights. My record, my performance as CHR chairperson for only two years is a matter of public knowledge. You be the judge, whether I've been remiss or I've been incompetent in discharging such a sensitive uh, mandate. Failure to afford protection to civil liberties, citing unabated media killings, lack of prosecution. I, of course, deplore, as much as uh, the oppositor here, the spate of media killings. But to say that I have never acted on any of those, or I've been inefficient in, in discharging my mandate, in, in uh, investigating and prosecuting the media killings, is farthest from the truth. I was responsible, Your Honors, in asking or in proposing to the President the creation of an interagency committee, a high-level interagency committee uh, to investigate and, um, extrajudicial killings and forced disappearance, torture, and other grave human rights violations. And uh, the president, acting on my recommendation, issued administrative order number 35. Now we've been working. The committee has been working regularly on this cases of extrajudicial killings, especially uh, media killings. And if I may share some statistics with respect to media killings, uh, we, we continuously monitor the progress of uh, this media killings at whatever stage, whether under the police investigation stage, under preliminary investigation, or trial. And uh, from 2001 to 2014, Your Honors, there are a total of 54 confirmed to be work-related media killings. That's from 2001 to 2014. Of course, there are more reported incidents of media killings, but we assess each and every case and determine whether the, they are work-related so as to be categorized as extrajudicial killings. Although the validation or the verification of whether media killings can be considered as, EDA, of, as EJKs is actually a work in progress. And uh, out of the 54 confirmed to be work-related media killings, as I said, under various stages, this is the breakdown. 12 under police or NBI investigation, six cases under preliminary investigation, 12 pending trial, and there are several that have been terminated or concluded, resulting in 10 convictions, five acquittals, four dismissals. And out of the 10 convictions, Your Honors, four or 40% have, uh, was, were posted during this administration. One was provisionally dismissed, one case was archived, and uh, three cases, there were deaths of suspects or the suspects of the accused died. So contrary to the belief of the oppositor, we continuously act on media killing cases. We monitor them very closely, very closely through that mechanism under administrative order number 35. Next point. Gross incompetence and in uh, due grant of favors and benefits to Napolis. It is regrettable that that is the impression of uh, the oppositor, that I'm being biased to Mrs. Napolis. Mrs. Napolis was the one, through her, through her lawyers, was the one who approached me and indicated her desire to allegedly or supposedly tell all. 
As part of our truth-seeking mandate, why wouldn't I listen? Whether or not it was a case of tell-all, whether or not she's telling the truth, whether or not she is partly telling the truth and partly lying, at least it's worth listening to. And that is why we are, we are never, or we have never taken her word for it. As a matter of fact, may I officially inform this honorable body that we are currently undertaking a validation or a vetting or a uh, or further fact finding precisely to uh, determine which of the allegations of Mrs. Napolis in her two affidavits thus far have some basis or which are with insufficient basis and which are without basis is all just part, Your Honor, of our truth-seeking mandate. I've, I've, I've told some people that I find myself in a damn if you do or damn if you don't situation now. Because if I suddenly stop pursuing the allegations of uh, Mrs. Napoles, then some quarters and, and maybe the opposition would accuse us of trying to cover up the allies that have been implicated in, in the Napoles affidavits. If, if I pursue, on the other hand, if I'm pursuing this, and which I do, I'm, 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 I'm indeed pursuing this, then some people are quick to accuse me of lawyering for Mrs. Napolis, which is an unfair accusation. My only plea, Your Honors, to the oppositor and to the people to allow us to do our job, to continue our job, and you be the judge later uh, after all of these things um, are concluded because we have a long way to go in investigating this, this very complicated case of Pitaf Napoles, Napoles scam. So no basis for gross incompetence. In, and, and by the way, there is an allegation here about the resolution in the serious illegal detention case filed by Ben Hurloy against Napoles. And there is some insinuation. It was reported that the multi-million package for the NBI DOJ family changed hands as a result of the dismissal of the case. I absolutely deny this. This is, uh, in the first place, it's just a report, a baseless report. There is an insinuation that the dismissal at first of the illegal detention case filed by Ben Hurloy was uh, for a consideration or was uh, something that was irregular. And I, I'm being accused of being part of that. In the first place, the serious, the serious illegal detention case went through the regular preliminary investigation case that was handled by a panel of prosecutors. The panel of pros prosecutors initially recommended for the dismissal of the serious illegal detention case. But on motion for rec reconsideration, a review resolution, which is approved by the Prosecutor General, reversed the finding of lack of probable cause and recommended the filing of criminal information in court. That's why we have this case already before the RTC Makati, and that is why Mrs. Napoles is under continued detention. I had nothing to do with those resolutions because they are part of the process of the... Of the uh, uh, DOJ. It was, it never reached me under the usual regular legal process in the department with respect to cases under preliminary investigation. After a case has been resolved at the preliminary investigation stage, the aggrieved party or the losing party would have the right to file a petition for review. And once a petition for review is filed, that is assigned to an undersecretary. And once an undersecretary resolves that uh, petition for review and the, the aggrieved party at that level files a motion for reconsideration, that is the only time that the Secretary of Justice will interfere by acting on the motion for reconsideration. What happened in this case is that the former lawyer of Mrs. Napoles, instead of elevating the review resolution at the PI level, to the, to the Department of Justice itself, via a petition for review, they went to the Court of Appeals. And the Court of Appeals dismissed that petition. 
In other words, the, the, the Court of Appeals and even the Regional Trial Court, which is now trying the case, had already affirmed the finding of probable cause against Mrs. Napoles. So, oh, duman po sa proseso yan. Bago, pong, excuse me, Madam Secretary, bago, bago Senator Estrada. Si, yes. uh, Secretary De Lima. Uh, Secretary De Lima, weren't you aware that there was already uh, an illegal detention case? Hindi ba kayo aware? Uh, of course I was aware. You were aware? Yes, sir. But, pero sabi niyo, wala kayong alam. I, I never said wala po akong alam. I ne I, but I, I think what I said is um, uh, I, have n I have nothing to do with those resol resolutions because those rev resolutions never reached me. All right. Were you aware that Mrs. Napoles even wrote the president a letter? It turned out, yeah. yes. It was Did reported in the papers. Yes. Have you read the letter of Mrs. Napoles addressed to the president? I think so. Yes, Your Honor. Excuse us. Uh, far away, Sandra. Can we have some silence, please, while uh, Senator Estrada is asking his questions, please? Okay, na. Have you read the uh, letter of Mrs. Napoles addressed to the president? Uh, I, I think I read that, Your Honor. What was the action of the president? It was actually referred to me for yes. comment. Was there a marginal note of the president? I don't remember, sir. Oh, what did the president tell you? For comment. He asked for comment on that letter. Yes. And was there a marginal note on the letter? I'm not sure if it was a marginal note of the president himself. It's probably a note... Uh, All right, uh, Madam Secretary. Given by her secretary, his secretary, the president's secretary. Okay, Madam Nami, can I, have, can I have a copy of that letter? I don't have it right now. Yes, can you submit it before this committee? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, I, I'll you. try to trace if indeed we have a copy, but I think I've seen that letter. All right. Uh, maybe you have it in your files in the office. Trace, Paul. All right. Thank you. You may proceed. Proceed, Madam Secretary, if you have still something to say. Uh, next point, Paul. On the uh, incident regarding former Palawan ex-governor, Joel Reyes and Mario Reyes, or the Reyes brothers, it seems to me that the accusation of the oppositor is that I was a party to their escape simply because he was a former client. I don't deny that he is a former client. I have several former clients in, in, in uh, all branches or in all levels of, uh, of government uh, because I used to be an election lawyer. But to insinuate or accuse me of being a party to such an illegal act of escaping as a fugitive from justice, that is too much. I will never do that. I, in fact, directed the BI to investigate that and I can even show you a communication from uh, then Commissioner uh, no a, 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 a memorandum forwarded to me by the BI where I uh, directed to intensify the search for the Reyes brothers and this, the, the, that incident was actually investigated internally by the BI, which resulted in the dismissal from service of two BI employees found to be responsible in, uh, in uh, facilitating such escape. So there, they were, these are two. One administrative aid, and another is a security guard. So the results of the investigation show that uh, they were complicit in the escape because this was not recorded in the BI data database. They are fleeing. They're fleeing the country. Uh, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I may, um, yes, sir. Uh, do you know personally Governor Reyes? Yes, Your Honor, because he was a former client. 
He was your former client. Yes, Your Honor. When election. he was a Palawan governor, way back, I'm not sure what year, but it was early on when I was an election law practitioner. Um, but on, he was a client for only one election. Okay. And he is still your friend up to now? Pardon? And he is still your friend up to now? Up to now. I have no communication whatsoever with him. When was the last time you know. spoke with him? I'm not sure, Paul. Years? Years. A few years After, ago. During the case? During the case, I'm, I don't recall. During the case? What do you mean case, sir? This case. Itong uh, kaso ni Governor Reyes. The murder case. Yes, you the mean murder the case. double the double murder case. Have you talked to him? I'm not sure anymore, Your Honor, if I received a text message or one or two All right. text message early just... on. Early on, Your Honor. If you can just recall, what did he say? He was feigning. He was he was claiming. Uh, he was asking for fairness in the handling of the case. And then what did you say? Of course I will. <clears throat> I can guarantee fairness as I always do. I prefer... Didn't you give him I, more preference can, because can he I, was your former client? Of course not, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. I never do that. Okay. Uh, of course I prefer that litigants never talk to me or never communicate to me whether through text or in person or through emissary. But the reality is some litigants would try to talk to me. And, but uh, I can say that I don't recall any, any litigant who would really insist on favoring him or her because I will not have that. I cannot, I cannot do that and I cannot give such a favor. Going back to your uh, stint as uh, the uh, chairman of the Commission on Human Rights, uh, Madam Chair, how much salary were you receiving then? Uh, just give me a ballpark figure, Madam Chair. Less than 100,000, I think. Less than 100,000, as commissioner. As, as, as chairperson. Chairman. The basic, the basic salary. All right. There were some allowances. How much was the allowance that you were received? A total of... How, how much is your take-home pay a month? 60 to 70, 70 Only. to 80. Including the I'm allowances. I'm not sure anymore. Including the allowances. I think so, Your Honor. Is it true when you were appointed as uh, the chair chairperson of the CHR. Who recommended you to Ms. Roy? Not sure who recommended. There were probably some. Uh, there were probably several. Is it, it, is it Governor Reyes who recommended you to that position? I'm not aware of that. You are uh, not aware of it. All so. right. When you were <coughs> already the chairman or the chairperson of the CHR, didn't you give a call to uh, Governor Reyes and told him, Gutom pala dito, wala pala akong kikitain dito? Of course not. Oh, you never said that. I don't that. know where you got that, sir. All right. Aside from this 60 to 70,000 that you take home a month as, as uh, your job as uh, the chairman of, uh, chairperson of the CHR, wala ka na ba ibang allowances na kinukuha? Then that is supposed to be from the government. Outside of the CHR? Wala po. Is it true that uh, Ms. Arroyo gave you an additional one million a month coming from PAGCOR as your allowance, additional uh, allowance? There was a confidential fund allotted to the CHR. Oh, but but that is that, not an additional allowance, sir. How much was it? Various amounts. Ranging from? 500. A month? Not a month, sir. Sometimes it's about quarterly, but not monthly. Quarterly? Quarterly, 500,000 
uh, as, in, as confidential funds, intelligence funds, Bob. No, I don't believe that. You're receiving a monthly allowance of one million. Sayang na matay na si Mrs. Ching Vargas de. In dating sa Malacanang, she was the one who kept the records that you were uh, receiving one million monthly allowance from Pagcor, as instructed by uh, President Arroyo. Anyway, you may continue, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Nomini. Continue, Madam Secretary. Thank you. Uh, the uh, next point, sir. I, I responded to the Reyes. Wala na po akong i... Thank you, Madam Secretary. But would this committee be still be expecting a written uh, yes, reply Honor. from you? Okay. If I may, may I ask, I, I may I ask the, the committee to uh, give me that? Yes, ma'am. Because, uh, you know, as I manifested earlier, we will uh, grant the request of uh, Senator Alan Peter Cayetano for another hearing. So, can you submit it uh, not later than Monday so that we will have time to go over your uh, written reply? Yes, Your Honor. I will try to submit that uh, this Friday, at the latest this Friday. Yes, we will proceed to questions now from uh, the committee members, Senator Estrada. But let me thank Muna, Ms. Sandra Kam. Thank you. Uh, thank you. you have questions for and then, and then, yeah, sorry, we will, we will now proceed to... Uh, uh, sorry, okay, let's... Uh, let's uh, uh, let me uh, recognize Senator Stad. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, I just would like to put on record that I do not have any intentions of blocking the uh, confirmation of uh, uh, the nominee right now, lest I be misinterpreted of uh, having a grudge against her. No, I do not have a grudge against her. Uh, Madam Secretary, are you running for a higher office uh, next elections? I have no such plans at the moment, sir. At the moment. <laughs> all right. You have answered all the uh, allegations against you uh, in the uh, uh, affidavit submitted uh, by uh, Mrs. Uh, Sandra Kahn, but you haven't addressed this uh, controversial... No, uh, Senator Estrada, I gave her the option to address whatever she wants to address because she has said that she will file a written uh, reply. Just to, just to clarify. With regard so, to this uh, private life? So she, it's, it, it was really her option to address whichever issues she wants to So you to don't address. want to answer this uh, allegations I regarding your private life I would prefer not to publicly public. engage in so far as those issues are concerned. So you want it to... Uh, it's pretend. too demeaning for me. All right. I respect that, uh, Madam Chair. Anything more, sir? No more. Thank you, Senator Estrada. So we will we will proceed to uh, to to the uh, to questions from committee members, if any. We'd like to thank Miss Sandra, Sandra Kam, and we want to assure you, ma'am, that we will take into consideration your sworn opposition when we make our decision, when we cast our vote for either the uh, confirmation or the rejection of the appointment of the secretary, as well as the. We will also take into account the sworn oppositions of former Congressman Fuwa, Ms. Libonau, even the, even the uh, letter, the mere letter from this uh, Greek national currently held at the uh, Bureau of Immigration. Thank you, Ms. Kam. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, will you allow me to answer uh, Secretary De Lima's uh, answer to my unjustifiable inaction and gross incompetence and pursuing cases lodged before the Department of Justice. Uh, Ms. Kam, can you make it brief huh? so that we'll have yes. time to deliberate also. Thank you. Go okay. ahead. Gusto ko lang po ipaalam kay Secretary Dilima na ito pong report of the fact-finding panel. It's a 99-page this was given to her April 11, 2012. The following day, tinawagan ko po siya because I have a, uh, uh, direct access to her. Ang sabi niya sa akin, give me two, two weeks, dadalhin ko lang ito sa office of the president. Then one month passed. I called her up again. And she said, 
nasa marami siyang mga rason. Then I told her, Madam Secretary, mayroon po akong nakuha na kopya ng fact-finding na, gina na ginawa mong panel of, of uh, investigators regarding this case. And the recommendation is indicting um, General Gaudencio Pangilinan et al. Nandiyan pa yung iba sa loob ng BUCOR, ng Bureau of Correction. Ang sabi niya sa akin, saan ka kumuha dyan? Fake yan. And now, Madam Secretary, I want to address this to you. This report has been lying in your office for two years and a month now. You never filed a case against General Gaudencio Pangilinan. Kaya po ako, I beg to disagree with you. Miss, Miss Cam, Miss Cam, uh, my attention has been called by the veteran uh, senators here that please address the chair. Oh, so I'm sorry. This will, this will I'm, not be. Uh, okay, I'm this sorry, will not Mr. Chairman. To a shouting match, no? I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, but I just want to question why it took. It's now two years and one month. Na itong report ay nasa kanya. The worst, tinanggal niya, tinanggal niya yung whistleblower dito na wala naman ng financial assistance from the government. What he's asking is only to be with his family. She terminated the witness protection program of this guy. Yan po, kaya ako po nandito dahil inilalaban ko po ang kasamahan kong mga whistleblowers. Hindi po ako papayag, Mr. Chairman, na gawin gaming tanga-tangahan because we risk our life here. Simula pag kiyakroyo, lumabas kami ng walang kapalit dahil gusto po namin ng tuwid na daan at gusto po namin ang katotohanan. Mr. Chairman, Attorney Laila de Lima is lying to her teeth regarding this panel report. I have seen the chairman of the panel who investigated this case, my respected prosecutor, prosecutor to go on. He's here right now. I have this. At hindi po ito fake. Ito lang po, at saka yung Reyes Brothers, if you don't want me to touch about her controversial life, I'm encouraging. I'm really encouraging Secretary De Lima to file a libel case against me so I have a chance to bring the truth to the court. I'm just waiting for the proper forum and a videotape that will show things. That's what I said here in my affidavit. Pangalawa po, Mr. Chairman, please, Your Honors, give me a little time. Because this is the only time that I can tell the whole country and the whole world kung anong nangyari sa mga kaso na ifinail namin, na inilapit namin sa kanya. Like for the case of the flight of Governor Reyes and uh, Mayor Mario Reyes at that time. I texted her, Madam Secretary, I got hold of, an, of the driver, the witness, na nakita niya kung paano tinatakan ang pasaporte ng dalawang magkapatid dahil siya ang nag-drive sa dalawang magkapatid. Tinatakan sa loob ng, ng kotse, dumaan sa Premier Airport po natin sa Terminal 3, taking the Cebu Pacific flight to Vietnam, hindi po sa departure area, kundi sa arrival area. Nang tinext ko siya, hindi niya ako sinagot. Instead, when the media asked her, she said, rubbish. So I was challenged, I went to Vietnam. Wala po kaming pundo, pero gusto ko lang ipakita that Secretary De Lima is lying. Nakuha ko po ang dokumento na nakalabas si Joel Reyes under the assumed name of Joseph Pelim at si Mario Reyes lumabas as Mario Reyes pero walang exit dito sa Pilipinas. I was able to get all these documents. I have the flight manifest. Pero anong ginawa po niyo, Madam Secretary? 
Mr. Chairman, inutil. Wala kaming nakuhang pagsabi man lang sa amin ng Sandra or kayo ng mga whistleblowers. Thank you for helping me. Dahil ang tingin niya sa mga whistleblowers ay kaya lang gamitin ng gobyerno. Now I want to emphasize, as the president of the Whistleblowers Association, we are not maliliit na tao. We are all professionals in here. We fight for the right. Ipinaglaban namin ang totoo at lalabanin namin ang mga maling ginagawa ng gobyernong ito. Yun lang po, Mr. Chairman. Yung San Napoles lawyering, alam naman po lahat ng tao kung paano ang isang Secretary of Justice going to the hospital ng Makati. It's very uncalled for. Very unethical. Kaya po, uh, salamat na binigyan nyo lang po ako ng chance ang makapagsalita. Because ngayon, hindi po na ilagay yung witness ng pag-alis ng Reyes Brothers sa Witness Protection Program. Tinanggalan ng terminate ang witness protection ng sa Bureau of Correction under her turf. Ano pong nangyari doon sa mga sex for flight na pinag... Wala din. They, will ne they were never under the witness protection program. Ang mga rape victims, kaya nga po, if you remember, Mr. Chairman, I was pleading to you to, to pass the whistleblower's bill. Dahil yan po ang magiging ipin namin. And again, I want to reiterate that the whistleblowers are not being paid. Kung alam niya lang po ang mga buhay ng mga whistleblowers before, maaawa kayo sa amin. And these whistleblowers now, I'm scared that Ben Harlui et al. will suffer the same fate that we did suffer. Ang, pag, ang pagpupunta ng isang Secretary of Justice sa architect ng iskandalong ito ay isa na nagdapat hindi siya makonfirm as Secretary of Justice. Thank you, Ms. Cam. Thank you. We will take, it, take into account. You, mention, you mentioned the report. Yan ba yung attachment po sa inyong affidavit? Yes, ah, attachment. Po, and lastly po, Mr. Chairman, uh, if you will. Sige po. Nagpapatuloy po ang uh, confirmation uh, hearing itong uh, si DOJ Secretary, Secretary Laila De Lima. At uh, kanina nga po ay uh, natanong siya ni itong si Senador Jigoy Estrada kung gusto niya magkomento tukos sa mga alegasyon kaugnay sa kanyang pribadong buhay. At uh, sumagot ang uh, Secretary na hindi muna siya magkomento dahil Uh, sinabi niya, and I quote, it's too demeaning for me. At uh, bukod dyan ay uh, tinanong siya ni uh, Senator Estrada tungkol doon sa kanyang uh, allowance umano na natatanggap mula sa pag-core noong time ni uh, dating Pangulong Gloria Arroyo, 1 million a month daw, nung siya ay CHR chairman at uh, ito ay itinanggi rin ni De Lima.